So this question is to minimize the function f of x, y, z equals 2x squared plus y squared plus 3z squared, subject to the constraint 2x minus 3y minus 4z equals 49. So let's visualize this if we can. So we're going to plug in various values here for my constant, 2x squared plus 3y squared plus 3z squared maybe equals 50. And let's see, does that intersect that plane? It does not. So there is no point on that plane where 2x squared plus y squared plus 3z squared equals 50. How about 500? Okay, yes. All those points on the intersection of that ellipse in the plane equal 500. So somewhere between 50 and 500, we have the optimal point. We are trying to find out where it just barely touches. So let's dial it back. Let's go to 100. Does it touch at 100? Doesn't seem to. Doesn't seem to pierce. How about 150? Looks like it just barely touches at 150. How about 140? That looks awfully close. So somewhere between 140 and 150 seems to be what we are looking for here. So let's go through our process and see what we can do. So what do we recall? We're thinking about level curves, or in this case, level surfaces. So big F of X, Y, Z equals a constant is a level surface of big F of X, Y, Z. And that's what we were looking at on Desmos. We were plugging in various values for C to see what we would get. So all of those surfaces are level surfaces of that function, big F. Similarly, 2X minus 3Y minus 4Z equals 49. 49 is a constant. So this is a level surface of what? This is a level surface of g of x, y, z equals 2x minus 3y minus 4z. And what we've shown in our earlier examples is the point of tangency will occur at the optimal value. And we want that to happen when we're work working in two dimensions, for example. If this is our constraint, and this was our maximum value. We recognize that the gradient is orthogonal to the level curves. We wanted these two gradients to be multiples of each other. And the same thing is true in three dimensions. If we have a point of tangency, the gradient functions should be parallel. So that's our key idea on Lagrange multipliers. So the gradient of F will be parallel to the gradient of G at the point of tangency. So what is the gradient of F with respect to X or X with respect to Y to Y with respect to Z, 6Z. How about the gradient of G with respect to X2 with respect to Y, negative three with respect to Z, negative four. And if they're parallel to each other, if two vectors are parallel, that means one is a multiple of the other. So we say the gradient of F is a multiple using gamma, typically, of the gradient of G. And our goal is to find the points X, Y, Z, where we're going to have a point of tangency. So here's our idea. The gradient of F is in the same direction as the gradient of G. So the gradient of F is a multiple of the gradient of G. So what do we have? We have three equations here. 4x 
equals two lambda, two y equals negative three lambda, six z equals negative four lambda. We'll start with those three, but I need one more equation. The point x, y, z must be on my constraint equation, which was what? which was 2x minus 3y minus 4z equals 49. That will be the fourth equation that we need here. So we've got some algebra to solve, so let's get to it. So I just solve everything for lambda. So if I solve for lambda, 4x divided by 2 equals lambda. So that's what 2x equals lambda. Over here, 2y divided by negative 3 equals lambda. So negative 2y over 3 equals lambda. So our goal here is going to be to keep x. So if these two things equal each other, equal lambda, they've got to equal each other. So 2x is going to equal negative 2y over 3. So again, x is the variable I'm choosing to keep. So I'm going to solve for y in terms of x. Multiply both sides by negative 3 halves. So negative 3 halves times 2x is negative 3 halves times negative 2 over 3y. And I get negative 3x equals y. Now coming over here, I'm going to solve for lambda again. We're going to divide both sides by negative 4. So 6z divided by negative 4 is lambda, which will give me what? Negative 3z over 2 is lambda. And I'm choosing to keep x. So lambda is also 2x. So if that's the case, then I'm going to equate those together, and I'm going to say 2x is negative 3z over 2. We'll multiply both sides by negative 2 thirds. So I get negative 2 thirds times 2x is negative 2 thirds times negative 3 over 2z. That will give me negative 4 thirds x. equals z. So let's collect the information that we have, and then we're going to use that to solve for x, y, and z. So we have both y and z in terms of x, and we also mentioned that it must be on that plane. That plane 2x minus 3y minus 4z equals 49. The point of tangency must be located both on the plane and on that growing ellipsoid. So here's where we are in terms of trying to solve this. So let's go through that process. And starting with the rule, we are going to substitute in for y and z. Notice y is negative 3x, z is negative 4 thirds x. Now let's go ahead and multiply. And we get this. So 33 thirds plus 16 thirds, 49 thirds x equals 49. Multiply both sides by 3 49ths. And we get x is 3. When we go up top and we see y is negative 3x, So y would be negative 3 times 3 so y is negative 9 and z is negative 4 thirds times x so z is negative 4 thirds times 3 So z is negative 4. There is my optimal point. I believe 
that's going to be the point of tangency, the point on the plane that is also on the ellipsoid. Three, negative nine, negative four. So let's go back and take a look at our geometry to see if that's the case. So looking at our current picture, when I have 140 as my possible constant, notice it's not quite touching. So 140 is a little bit too small. Now the point I put on there is three, negative nine, negative four. So we can see that looks awfully close to where the point of tangency is going to be. So how do we decide what that right-hand number is going to be? I believe my point of tangency is gonna occur at three, negative nine, negative four. What do I need to do? I need to plug that in to 2x squared plus y squared plus 3z squared to see what that value is going to be. So let's do that. And there's our function, our growing ellipsoids as the c is changing. 2x squared plus y squared plus 3z squared. Plugging in 3, negative 9, negative 4, we get this, which becomes 147. So I believe that is our optimal solution. So I believe the minimum minimum value of f of x, y, z equals 2x squared plus y squared plus 3z squared subject to the constraint that we had, which was 2x minus 3y minus 4z is 49. That minimum value is what? I believe it is 147. At what point? At our point of interest, which was 3, negative 9, negative 4. Now again, let's look at the geometry to convince ourselves that that's correct. I'm going to change the 140 here to 147. Now will that actually touch? We turn the green dot off. Let's get as close as we can get. If we, if we look at this thing, does it appear to touch without passing through? That looks awfully good. If I go ahead and I put the green dot on there, that's even more evidence that that seems like a reasonable solution. Now, I hope it's obvious that this is a minimum, that as this thing grows from 50 to 100, to 147, those surfaces keep growing and growing, those level surfaces keep growing and growing, but there can be no maximum. If I have 200, there will certainly be points where it'll intersect, or 300 or 400, because that plane grows and grows and grows forever. So there will be no maximum. So I would argue the geometry makes it clear that a result there has to be a minimum value.